So today I'll be reviewing an MPPT charge controller that was sent to me by a company called Batteria Power in China. The model is called Sunrock 2020 Pro. It's a 20 amp MPPT charger uh, that charges 12 and 24 volt batteries. The uh, battery type uh, is described as uh, lead acid AGM gel but also lithium iron phosphate and I'll be testing the lithium iron phosphate capabilities today. The description says it has a three stage charging, it has over temperature and over charge protection and also reverse polarity. Uh, the weather rating is rated as IP45 which means it is protected from small objects and it's also waterproof for low pressure water from any direction. The packaging is surprisingly good and it comes with a quick start guide and also a full uh, user manual and uh, the charger itself seems surprisingly uh, well made uh, good quality pretty heavy uh, it has most of the specs on the back and it comes with additional pigtails to hook into uh, your battery and also you know your solar panel Today I'll be utilizing my lab uh, power supply here. I'll be simulating a 300 watt solar panel. Uh, I'm going in with 30 volts or 32 volts and then uh, a full 10 amps. And we're gonna see if this uh, MPPT DC-DC conversion uh, is working as advertised. I have two batteries here today to test. Uh, both of them are lithium iron phosphate. Uh, both batteries came from battery hookup and uh, I have a link in the discount code in the description for you. The description says the input voltage from the solar panel should be at least 3 volts higher than the battery voltage and it says not to exceed 30 volts max for uh, 12 volt batteries and 60 volts max for 24 volt batteries. To make things easier I'm going to cut these ends off and just put Andersons on it and then I can use my Anderson power poles to connect this charger. There we go. So I got my 30 amp innocence crimped on and typically with charge controllers you want to plug in the battery first so we're going to try the 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery first and sure enough it springs into action uh, it gives me 13.1 volts which is identical with my reading on my battery so that's a good thing. Uh, let me push some buttons here the instructions are really good. It tells you, you know, long press and short press and um, what all these different... Oh, here we go. It's gel, AGM and lithium iron phosphate. So long press and then two short presses to get it to lithium iron phosphate. Probably a long press after that to set it. 12 volt or 24 volts. So that's good. Long press. Here we go. Lithium iron phosphate, 13.1 volts. So far so good. This seems to be uh, pretty straightforward. So I have uh, 32 volts on my power supply right now and this power supply puts out 10 amps. Let me turn the current down to nothing. So I'm simulating a 300 watt panel right now and let me just see uh, what we can get here. Oh here we go. See it's turning on. Here we go. Full 10 amps. That's good. That's that was a delay. It's, it looks like the battery was almost full. Now it's charging the 100 
percent LED is blinking. 13.7 volts, 13.7 volts, so that's very accurate. And uh, 21, oh, 21.5 amps. Well, let's see if that's really true. That would be easy and impressive. Let me see what I'm getting here. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, it's putting out, uh, my meter is reading 19.9 .9 amps. Excellent. So this would be the capacity, it says it's, a, it's getting warm already, uh, 20 amp charge controller. Let's see how hot this thing gets. Uh, so far that was easy. Plug and play. The wires are 10 gauge. Uh, as far as I can tell they are copper wires. So that's good. Yeah, let this charge for a bit. And uh, it says 21 amps now. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting about 20 amps, 19.8. So it's it's somewhat accurate. Voltage reading is identical. Let's come back after a few minutes. Let this thing heat up a bit and and see what it does. Let me turn my power supply down. Let's do 5 amps. Cut this in half and see if the DC to DC conversion works. It's showing 13.6 volts and still charging with 11.2 amps, so that would indicate that the MPPT, yeah, here we go, 10.6, 10.5 on the display, 10.8. So this is very accurate and the MPPT DC to DC conversion works. I'm pretty impressed so far. Here's something else I really like, I just noticed that about this solar charge controller. Uh, if you turn your power supply on or if you plug in your solar panel, uh, there's really a soft start right now. There's zero amps drawing and it gradually ramps up uh, the charging current, which is good. So we are approaching absorption voltage here, so I just hooked up a second charge controller uh, to increase uh, the charging process here and we are currently at uh, 14 volts. Uh, my Victron is reading 14.1 volts. So as soon as we reach 14.2 volts the amperage should be dropping and I'm currently still charging with a full 10 amps. I got this Victron limited to 10 amps and I'm also putting out 10 amps on the uh, battery power uh, charge controller. So I'm putting a combined right now 20, 23 and a half uh, amps into this thing. So as soon as we reach 14.2 volts, both of these charge controllers should cut back on the charging current. And the reason I'm running the Victron in comparison uh, to this uh, Chinese charge controller is I, I want to see if the voltage settings are accurate and if this charge controller will indeed you know, cut back on the charging current that's going into the battery. So as we are approaching 14.2 volts on these charge controllers, we can see that the amperage is tapering back on both charge controllers. Uh, we are currently charging at 16, 16.8 amps. Uh, the reason I hooked up the Victron charge controller is I wanted to see what the thermal uh, generation is on, on, on these charge controllers. So both of them are equally warm even though uh, this Victron is limited to 10 amps and uh, the, the battery battery up power from China is putting out you know 13 amps or was putting it out. So at 14.2 uh, volts the uh, absorption charge is kicking in so both charge controllers are tapering back their output. I think I'm going to disconnect the Victron now. I, I've proven that the cutoff uh, amperage is happening at the same time. Uh, this Chinese charge controller is putting out about 13 amps and my Victron, uh, let's see what my Victron is putting out right now. Here we go, my Victron just uh, dialed back to 3.8 amps, 14.2 uh, volts on my Victron. I'm reading 14.1, the Chinese charge controller is reading 14.1 and it's still putting out about 12 amps into the system. So let me disconnect the Victron and, and see what the Chinese charge controller does. Here we go. 
It's tapering back right now, so we're at 14.2 volts and the charge controller is tapering back to 15 amps, 14.9 amps, which is great. So let this charge a little bit. It's a constant current, constant voltage. So right now we're in the constant voltage phase of this charge controller. which matches my Victron charging profile. And I can see on my power supply that the amperage is uh, dialing back more and more, 14.6 amps. So right now the charge controller keeps the voltage at 14.2 and it's providing, uh, you know, the battery takes whatever amperage it can take, which is pretty good. I, I didn't expect that to be honest. So we're going to let this charge and see uh, where this voltage ends up. So here we are at the end of the charging cycle. The voltage is currently sitting at 4.2 volts. The amperage keeps cutting back. So this is the constant voltage mode you get on these charge controllers. Currently we are charging uh, with 1.1 amps. The charge controller is keeping it at 4.2 volts for this lithium iron phosphate battery which is perfect and it'll continue to do so un until the amperage basically tapers off to nothing so overall I have to say I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this little charge controller I don't know what the price point is uh, but I leave a link in the description for you of, uh, to, to the website and to this particular charge controller and uh, I think I have another application for this charge controller uh, using uh, lead acid a mobile application in my Toyota 4Runner. So, but that's for the next video. That's all I have for you today, and I'll see you on the next one.